Despero dropped Verlo's tail. He looked up at the members of the Mouse Council. His father met his gaze and then shook his head and looked away. Despero turned and faced the sea of mice. To the dungeon! A voice cried out, straight to the dungeon with him. Despero's head, which had been full of such lovely phrases as happily ever after and lovely ears and I honor you, suddenly cleared. Straight to the dungeon, another voice shouted. Enough, said the most very honored head mouse. This child will be conducted in an orderly fashion. We will act civilized, he cleared his throat. He said to Despero, son, turn and look at me. Despero turned. He looked up and into the head mouse's eyes. They were dark eyes deep and sad and frightened and looking into them despero's heart thudded once twice despero tilling said the head mouse yes sir said despero we the 14 members of the mouse council have discussed your behavior first we will give you a chance to defend yourself against these rumors of your egregious acts did you or did you not sit at the foot of the human king I did, said Despero, but I was listening to the music, sir. I was there to hear the song that the king was singing. To hear the what? The song, sir. He was singing a song about the deep purple falling over sleepy garden walls. The head mouse shook his head. Whatever are you talking about is beside the point. The question is this and only this. Did you sit at the foot of the human king? I did, sir. The community of mice shifted their tails and paws and whiskers. They waited. And did you allow the human girl, the princess, to touch you? Her name is P. Never mind her name. Did you allow her to touch you? Yes, sir, said Despero. I let her touch me. It felt good. A gasp arose from the assembled mouse, from the assembled mice. Despero heard his mother's voice. Mon dieu, it is not the end of the world. It was a touch. What of it? It is simply not done, came Aunt Florence's voice from the crowd. To the dungeon, said a mouse in the front row. Silence, roared the most very honored head mouse. Silence. He looked down at Despero. Do you, Despero Tilling, understand the sacred, never to be broken rules of conduct for being a mouse? Yes, sir, said Despero. I guess so, but did you break them? Yes, sir, said Despero. He raised his voice, but I broke the rules for good reasons because of music and because of love. Love, said the head mouse. Oh, crap, said Furlow, here we go again. I love her, sir, said Despero. We are not here to talk about love. This trial is not about love. This trial is about you being a mouse, shouted the most very honored head mouse from high atop the bricks, and not acting like one. Yes, sir, said Despero, I know. No. I don't think that you do know. And because you do not deny the charges, you must be punished. You are to be sent, as ancient castle mouse law decrees, to the dungeon. You are being sent to the rats. That's right, shouted a mouse in the crowd. That's the ticket. The dungeon, the rats. Despero's small heart sank all the way to the tip of his tail. There would be no light in the dungeon, no stained glass windows, no library and no books. There would be no Princess P. But first, said the most very honored head mouse, we will give you the chance to renounce your actions. We will allow you to go to the dungeon with a pure heart. Renounce, repent, say that you are sorry you sat at the foot of the human king. Say that you are sorry you allowed the human princess to touch you. Say that you regret these actions. Despero felt hot 
and then cold, and then hot again. Renounce her? Renounce the princess? Mon Dieu, shouted his mother. Son, do not act the fool. Renounce. Repent. What say you, Despero Tilling? I say, I say, I say... No, whispered Despero. What? said the house head mouse. No, said Despero. And this time he did not whisper the word. I am not sorry. I will not renounce my actions. I love her. I love the princess. There was a bellow of collective outrage. The whole of the mouse community surged toward Despero. The mice seemed to become one angry body with hundreds of tails and thousands of whiskers and one huge hungry mouth opening and closing and opening and closing, saying over and over and over again, to the dungeon, to the dungeon, to the dungeon. The words pounded through Despero's body with each beat of his heart. Very well, said the most very honored head mouse. You will die then with a black heart. Threadmaster, he called, bring out the thread. Despero marveled at his own bravery. He admired his own defiance. And then, reader, he fainted. Chapter 11, The Headmaster Cometh. When Despero came to, he heard the drum. His father was beating a rhythm that had much more boom and much less tat. Together, Lester and the drum produced an ominous sound that went something like this. Boom, 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 tat. Boom, 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 tat. Make way for the thread, cried a mouse, who was pushing a wooden spool of red thread through the crowd. Make way for the thread. Boom, 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 tat, went the drum. To the dungeon, shouted the mice. Despero lay on his back, blinking his eyes. How, he wondered, had things gone so terribly wrong? Wasn't it a good thing to love? In the story in the book, love was a very good thing. Because the knight loved the fair maiden, he was able to rescue her. They lived happily ever after. It said so, in the book. They were the last words on the page, happily ever after. Despero was certain that he had read exactly those words time and time again. Lying on the floor with the drum beating and the mice shouting and the threadmaster calling out, Make way! Make way! Despero had a sudden chilling thought. Had some other mouse eaten the words that spoke the truth? Did the knight and the fair maiden really not live happily ever after? Reader, do you believe that there is such a thing as happily ever after? Or, like Despero, have you, too, begun to question the possibility of happy endings. Happily ever after, whispered Despero. Happily ever after, he said again as the spool of thread came to a stop beside him. The thread, the thread, the thread, murmured the mice. I'm sorry, said the mouse behind the spool, but I have to ask you to stand up. I have to do my job. Despero got slowly to his feet. On your hind legs, please, said the Threadmaster. It's the rules. Despero stood on his hind legs. Thank you, said the mouse. I appreciate it. While Despero watched the Threadmaster unwound a length of red thread from the spool and tied a loop. Just enough for the neck, muttered the mouse. No more, no less. That's what the last Threadmaster taught me. Enough thread for the neck. He looked up at Despero and then back down at the loop of thread. And you, my friend, have a small neck. The Threadmaster raised his arms and put them around Despero's neck. He leaned in close, and Despero smelled celery. He could feel the Threadmaster's breath in his ear as he worked at tightening the thread. Is she beautiful? The Threadmaster whispered. What? said Despero. Shh! The princess. Is she beautiful? The princess P? Yeah. She's lovely beyond all imagining, said Despero. Just right, the Threadmaster said. He drew back. He nodded his head. A lovely princess, just so, like a fairy tale. And you love her as a knight loves a maiden. 
You love her with a courtly love, a love that is based on bravery and courtesy and honor and devotion. Just so. How do you know that? Tespero said. How do you know about fairy tales? Shh! The mouse leaned in close, and Despero smelled celery again, green and alive. Be brave, friend, whispered the Threadmaster. Be brave for the princess. And then he stepped back and turned and shouted, Fellow mice, the thread has been knotted. The thread has been tied. A roar of approval went up from the crowd. Despero squared his shoulders. He made a decision. He would do as the Threadmaster suggested. He would be brave for the princess, even if, reader, could it be true that there was no such thing as happily ever after? <laughs>